Listen to the radio. Harry and Edna's want to show you heard it from the three bells. What o and welcome to Harry and Edna on the wireless. Now, if you can hear a hum, there is a reason for this. We are sitting on a train in Paddington Station, but not just any train, for this is the sleeper train to Cornwall. We're going to be taking the train all the way to Penzance. What ho! Now we're in the station and haven't pulled out yet, but we've only just literally got it into our sleeping berth. And I, this is a real bucket list moment for me. I always wanted to travel on a sleeper. It evokes the golden age of travel. Uh, Orient Express, Agatha Christie, 1930s Art Deco. Well, that's what I imagined. So I was rather chuffed when I got the chance to travel from Paddington to Penzance on the sleeper. Above me is Minnie Harry, who in the he's taken the top bunk, so I'm on the bottom bunk. And we're still in Paddington Station. We've said hello to Paddington Bear. There's a brass bear, a brass statue of the bear. And we're waiting to pull out. I think it's about 11.15. What ho? You've got to be a skinny person to do this. Um, it is somewhat compact. But as you would expect, it's, I'm laying on a very comfortable bed here. Above me is Minnie Harry. And we've got some complimentary goodies. I've got a little towel, um, a mint a magazine, a bottle of water, and some soap. So I think we're going to be all okay. But first we're going to go and explore, because there is a lounge area, which is basically a dining car, which looks like something from the 1970s. I will put some pictures up on uh, Facebook. If you've got a Harry and Edna on the wireless, you'll see the pictures. What ho! So it's quarter to twelve, and we're actually are moving. The start of the great adventure... Well, the great adventure of me actually sleeping, and I'll wake up in sunny Penza. What ho! Now, as you may have guessed, Edna's not actually with me on this trip, it's just myself and our son. Ho. But, yeah, what a. However, Edna did give me a book to read on the way, to sort of fit in with this sort of Agatha Christie film theme. It's The 450 from Paddington by Agatha Christie. And after this track, Edna will give us a little excerpt of the sort of thing I'm listening to. What ho! The porter retrieved the suitcase and marched with it to the adjoining coach where Mrs McGillicuddy was installed in solitary splendour. The 450 was not much patronised, the first class clientele preferring either the faster morning express or the 640 with dining car. Mrs McGillicuddy handed the porter his tip which he received with disappointment, clearly considering it more applicable to third class than to first class travel. Mrs McGillicuddy Though prepared to spend money on comfortable travel after a night journey from the north and a day's feverish shopping was at no time an extravagant tipper. She settled herself back on the plush cushions with a sigh and opened her magazine. Five minutes later, whistles blew and the train started. The magazine slipped from Mrs McGillicuddy's hand. Her head dropped sideways. Three minutes later, she was asleep. She slept for 35 minutes and woke refreshed. Resettling her hat, which had slipped askew, she sat up and looked out of the window at what she could see of the flying countryside. It was quite dark now, a dreary, misty December day. Christmas was only five days ahead. London had been dark and dreary. The country was less so. Though occasionally rendered cheerful with its constant clusters of lights as the train flashed through towns and stations. Serving last tea now, said an attendant, whisking open the corridor door like a gin. Miss McKillicuddy had already partaken of tea at a large department store. She was for the moment amply nourished. The attendant went down on the went down the corridor uttering his monotonous cry. Mrs McGillicuddy looked up at the rack where her various parcels reposed with a pleased expression. The face towels had been an excellent value. What ho! Her satisfied gaze returned to the window. A train travelling in the opposite direction rushed by with a screech, making the windows rattle and causing her to start. The train clattered over points and passed through a station. Another train passed then with less vehemence than the first one. After that moment, another train, also on the downward line, swerved inwards towards them, for a moment with almost alarming effect. For a time, the two trains ran parallel 
and now a little one ahead, then the other. At that moment, when the trains gave an illusion of being stationary, a blind in one of the carriages flew up with a snap. Mrs McGillicuddy looked into the lighted first-class carriage that was only a few feet away. Then she drew her breath in with a gasp and rose to her feet. What ho? Do you know, I honestly can't feel like we're moving. The slight movement of the... uh of my jacket hanging up on the door gives an indication that we are moving. But I really wouldn't think I was moving at all. What ho? Well, it's time to retire and go to bed. We have our little sink and we're cleaning our teeth and tucking ourselves up as we risk probably through the Wiltshire countryside. And when we wake up, I'm expecting the full English. Actually, it's continental breakfast, but either way, I'm not complaining. One does like a nice bit of continental, well, any breakfast really in the morning when you're me. So, next time you'll hear us, well, you should be in sunny Cornwall. What ho? We've just pulled into Truro, and you can hear a bit of the buffling behind me as people get on and off. It's very early, silly early, but we're going all the way on to Penzance. And then actually we're coming back to Truro, because that's where our, our final destination is. But Minnie Harry's still asleep and I can't wake him up. So we've got about another half hour yet before we have to get off the train. What ho? It's seven o'clock in the morning now and I'm a little bit hazy, but breakfast has been served. I've got my um, bacon roll the size of my fingernail. Minnie Harry's still fast asleep up the top and we just pulled out of St. Hostel. So it won't be long now before we are here in Penzance. What ho? One disaster, however, part of the uh, window cover, the uh, thing that holds the curtain up, fell off, and it's cut my glasses in half. So that's the end of my uh, original Chouan signed winders from, 19, from the 1950s. What ho? Well, we're here at Penzance. We've made the journey. Fully, well, I would say fully refreshed, but that would be lying, we're not. In the words of Edna, I'll get grumpy. And mini Harry will get emotional, so we're going to go and uh, see our friends and have a little bit of a head down. But we shall disappear now from Penzance and say toodle pip. However, Penzance is a... If you're on YouTube, do do this. Go to a channel called All The Stations. They started their journey from Penzance and they are uh, a couple who decided to visit every train station in Bryn and they start their journey and I love that series and it's kind of cool to be here What ho? Well that's it young mini Harry and I are going to get our head down so it's just time for me to say toodle pip or however they say toodle pip in Cornish What ho?